Welcome everyone. In this video I'll be featuring the largely forgotten but brazen assassination of Virat Azavachin, also known as Mr. Ban, who owned uh, Ban's Diving on Koh Tao, which is now one of the very biggest diving schools in the world. If you wish to access information about murders and other violent crimes on Koh Tao, information that is not necessarily covered, or at least not necessarily well covered, in the mainstream media, then please subscribe to this channel and click the, um, the button below. Often there is insightful information as well within the comments that some viewers uh, leave uh, beneath the videos, so those comments can be worth reading too. Okay, so let's start our coverage of Mr. Ban's murder with some comments uh, written by Dale Halpin of the Bangkok Post and which was published on the 28th of September 2014 which some of you will be aware was 13 days after the very ghastly murders of Hannah Witheridge and David Miller. So I'll just read a portion of uh, what he wrote. And the sub-headline was, uh, The handling of Koh Tao murders raises fresh questions of police incompetence since history is littered with botched investigations. And then uh, one of his paragraphs, uh, he writes, It's not the first murder on the tiny resort island that has left police baffled. In 2002, Tambon Koh Tao Administrative Association Chairman Virat Azavachin was shot dead in broad daylight while talking with three friends on Ree Beach, he means Siree Beach. A lone gunman, his face covered with a balaclava, walked up to the group and fired six shots at Virat before calmly walking away. No arrests were ever made, despite rumours that killing May have, been, uh, may have stemmed from a dispute between warring mafia families. Okay, so that was what was written on 2014. And it seems that the Bangkok Post had um, published a contemporaneous article in February of 2002, but which uh, I've been unable to find online. However, it was republished in at least one online forum called sporttoday.org on the 15th of February 2002 and I'll just read from uh, from that. So this was published uh, or republished and it said that the Bangkok Post reported this a week ago so that suggests it was published about the 7th of February and it said quote Tao chief killed by masked man shot in daylight talking to friends a local administrative organisation chief and business tycoon was shot dead by a, gas, a masked gunman on Tao Island early yesterday morning. Virat Azavachin, 42, chairman of Tambon Co Tao Administrative Association, was shot while talking with three friends near Ree Beach. A lone gunman, his face covered with a woolen mask or a balaclava, walked up to the group and fired six shots at Mr Virat, police said. One of the bullets entered his left ear. I've also been told that three bullets entered his chest. The gunman uh, then walked calmly uh, away towards the main road, witnesses told police. The dead man's wife, Rumluk, 29, and Tombon organisation officials were questioned yesterday as police investigators looked for a motive. The investigators suspected the attack arose from either a business conflict or a dispute over work in the Tambon. The victim owned Bands Diving, a 100 million baht diving business and the largest dive shop on the resort island. He recently began a ferry boat business serving the Champon Koh Tao route. And that was the end of uh, that quote. Now, on the 30th of May, 2021, one of my viewers, uh, using the name of Terry Graham, posted these public comments beneath uh, my video tribute to 20 foreign victims of Koh Tao. So thank you very much, Terry, for uh, this or these insights that you've given us. And uh, what he, what Terry wrote was, "What you do not acknowledge is that Mr. Bang was also a very violent Thai." Often he would pull his gun out when enraged, and this also is a reason he was hit upon. And then I responded. I said, hi Terry, your comment is one of the more enlightening I have received beneath my videos. 
There is remarkably little recorded in the mainstream media about Mr. Ban, Virat Azavachan. I never met this guy, uh, so I have no first-hand knowledge. Over the past few months, different uh, sources have passed on additional information about Mr. Ban to me. It seems that you possibly knew Mr. Ban personally. Is that correct? And then uh, Terry Graham replied, let's just say that I took that photo of Ban. And when he talks about that photo, if uh, you've noticed the thumbnail to this video, there is a headshot of Mr. Ban, um, and that was taken from uh, a larger picture of Mr. Ban repairing a motorcycle in his motorcycle business on uh, Koh Phangan. So Terry's saying, let's just say that I took that photo of Ban in his rental bike shop. Knew him before Ban diving was started and before he married Luke. That's Kun uh, Run Luke. My association lasted seven years. He also came across as a charming tie, but when he got his bad boy boots on, watch out. Driven and motivated by pure greed for the filthy lucre. Possessor of a crazy wild temper and had no issue with pulling a gun. Connected to the Thai Mafia on Koh Phang An before his Tao days. Tao days being Koh Tao days. Personally witnessed his violent and mental side not to be messed with, same as Santi. Santi is Santi Cockpool. Santi Cockpool, for those who um, have, are not familiar with some of my other videos, Santi Cockpool had been a diving instructor with Bands Diving Resort, um, and he had been hired as muscle to protect um, uh, the Bands uh, Diving Resort after Mr. Ban was assassinated, and uh, he'd grown up on uh, Koh Phang An, which is a neighbouring island, with the, um, the widow and with the widow's younger sister. And I'll continue. Originally a Bangkok-born Thai, but forced out of Bangkok after a vehicle accident and landed in Koh Phang An very early 1980s. When they told me he had been assassinated on Koh Tao in 2002, I was not surprised at all. That was his destiny, simply because that was how his mental uh, facilities rolled. My only surprise was how he lasted so long before the hitman got him. You must take on board that he had nothing when he first went to Koh Tao and had risen to lofty heights because of a mixture of hard work and intimidation of anyone who came between him and money. There were two Farangs. A Farang is a Westerner. Uh, there were two Farangs who uh, made his string possible on Koh Tao. They started the bike business with him on Koh Phang An and led the way to Tao before he set foot there. One was Canadian and one was Aussie. These guys could tell you some stories and really give you the good oil on the origins of Koh Tao regards Mr. Ban and the big players in your videos. Live by the sword and die by the sword. Here within lies the story of Ban. You may be a lawyer, mate. This is him talking to me. You may be a lawyer, mate, but as long as you have hair on your ass, you will never get to the real story of Koh Tao. Cheers, mate. All the best. One thing, Ban never took drugs or drank alcohol, but after knowing him all those years, I figured he, uh, would, he would have been a much more balanced person if he did. Okay, so that was the contribution from Terry Graham. And thanks again, Terry, for that. Now I've been informed by others that Mr. Ban did indeed originally come from Bangkok and I was also informed that he was of Chinese descent. I mean I might be wrong, if I'm wrong please leave a comment below. I noted a comment on one or two of the online forums plus comments made to me directly uh, stating that Mr. Ban uh, got rather full of himself as his business grew uh, and, as his, his, and as his success grew. Now. It doesn't really take a lot to be murdered on a, a place like Koh Tao. Uh, so sometimes just simple jealousy might be enough to trigger someone. I certainly do not know who murdered Mr. Ban, nor do I know the, native, the motive, but I was reliably informed that Mr. Ban was a womanizer, so that that behavior may provide a jealous rival with sufficient motive to commit a murder. I certainly do not wish to suggest that Mr. Ban's widow, Quinn Rumluk, had anything to do with his murder. 
I do not know this lady, nor her sister and co-owner of bands, uh, whose name is Kun Wanaluk, but I have received favourable comments about both of them, including the treatment of their staff. I've not asked Quinn Rumluk to comment specifically for this video because on the 16th of October 2020, I received an email from Bands Diving Resort in response to an email I had sent to them. And in their email in response, they confirmed that Santi Cockpool was involved in an incident uh, in the Fishbowl Beach Bar on the 15th of August 2020. This is where Santi um, uh, slashed open the left side of the neck of a Scottish tourist. But uh, in the email they added that uh, the family wished to have privacy regarding the murder of Mr. Ban. And it is notable that both the Bangkok Post and Terry Graham refer to Mr. Ban's alleged mafia connections. But as I said, I don't actually know the fellow. I never knew him, so all the information I have is very second and third hand. So you might be asking yourself, what are some of the reasons for producing and publishing this video? Well, firstly, I wish to create another record of Mr. Ban's murder, which is a crime that many of the tourists are blissfully unaware of, even those who have uh, taken courses at Ban's Diving Resort. And uh, which, uh, and uh, yeah, his murder is something which might be forgotten with the passage of time. Secondly, Mr. Ban's murder highlights how the local police are unable or unwilling, probably more unwilling than unable, but unwilling to solve murders on the island. Thirdly, the mainstream media services often tend to understate the crime on Koh Tao by referring to only a handful of tourist murders that have occurred there. They often look, overlook some tourist and expat fatalities and often completely disregard murders of Thai nationals. It really should not have been such a surprise to the outside world when David Witheridge and uh, Hannah, sorry, when Hannah Witheridge and David Miller were brutally bludgeoned to death on the 15th of September 2014. I've published details of several tourist deaths from 2000 until the time of that double murder, and I'll uh, put some links in the uh, description below. And really, when you think about it. A lot of these islands have got very violent communities, so when a tourist industry is built on top of some very violent communities, it shouldn't be at all surprising that uh, a lot of tourists wind up um, either being murdered or subject to other violent crime. Now, one of the uh, pieces of reporting which I saw, which concerned me a little bit, uh, came from the BBC immediately after the murders of Hannah Witheridge and David Miller and there the in this report it was uh, or the island was regarded as um, a normally peaceful island but I'll just play it for you here this is something which I reproduced in one of my other videos and I'll leave a link for this below as well Reinforcements were rushed to this normally peaceful island to help investigate what appears to be a brutal double murder. This has to be the most unlikely place you'd expect to see a crime like this, and that, of course, is what the locals are hoping that it is just a ghastly one-off and that once it's solved they'll be able to recover the laid-back vibe that's brought so many thousands to visit over the years. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Koh Tao, Thailand. Okay, now Jonathan Head had uh, done some very good reporting on the Koh Tao murder trial immediately after the, um, the judgment had been handed down but I'm, I get concerned when there are reports that describe Koh Tao as a normally peaceful island or that uh, express any surprise that uh, such violent crimes have been occurring there. So uh, one of the reasons why I pub I'm publishing uh, this video today is just to highlight to people that uh, the islands are much more dangerous than um, 
some people in the mainstream media might have you believe. And um, look, the villages on uh, the islands and along the coast of the Gulf of Thailand have been home to pirates for centuries. Many Thai pirates committed murder and rape on, in, on an industrial scale, especially um, against Vietnamese boat people following the fall of Saigon on the 30th of April 1975. So murder on these islands is nothing new and neither are the cover-ups. I've also heard anecdotes from expats about murders on these islands in the 1980s and 1990s that were simply covered up by the police and locals and then promptly forgotten. So these islands are basically quite lawless. If you thought this video was useful, please give it a thumbs up. And um, you know, if you want to leave any constructive comments below, uh, I'm sure that other viewers will appreciate reading them and I certainly enjoy reading them as well. And of course, new subscribers are all, always welcome. So uh, look, thanks so much for watching and stay safe. Bye for now.